Here is an adult female Holcornia nigrigularis that I have been raising since she was a very small juvenile. And here a recently acquired male. Now let's make some babies. Male huntsmen can sometimes be rather hesitant when approaching females, and I don't really blame them either since they do run the gauntlet of suffering the minor inconvenience of getting eaten. This guy however, he was hornier than a Catholic priest at a playground and went straight for her. Huntsman spiders are fast in almost every walk of life, except for their sex lives. So to spare you guys some boredom while still showing you what their courtship is like, I've decided to speed up the footage. Like many spiders, huntsmen are highly sensitive to vibration. In fact, it's one of the main ways with which they perceive the world around them. And rather unsurprisingly, vibrations are therefore an integral part of courtship for a large number of spiders. The strange tapping movements of the male spider's legs are a form of communication known as drumming and it's displayed by a wide variety of spiders, everything from araniomorphs like these huntsmen, to mygalomorphs such as tarantulas. Another courtship behaviour that you'll probably have to be more attentive to notice, is one that would have gotten this male spider in some serious trouble if he were a human for he is actually tying down the female with silk. Restraining her in this manner ensures his safety, just in case she decides she's hungry and takes advantage of the extremely eager meal right on top of her. The tricky part with huntsman humping is getting into a good position. The female's reproductive area, known as the epigyne or epigynum, is situated on her underside, rather inconvenient for the male, but thankfully his uh, insemination devices, a pair of pedipalps at the front, are rather long and quite flexible. So provided he's persistent enough, he should manage to worm his way in. But it seems that before they do the job, they need a clean. Good to know this male is hygienic. With the cleaning job finished, now it's time for business. Success. I left the two spiders together overnight, and come the morning they had separated. Obviously a long-term relationship didn't work out for them, but who cares, at least I'll be getting some babies. Now time to move on to another pairing and a much more leggy affair. I have been keeping centipedes ever since an age at which it would probably be rather inappropriate to be keeping centipedes, but whatever. But even though my place has been a lair of centipedes, huh, remember that name, long before I started getting into huntsmen, 
Pairing these leggy fellows still remains a much more difficult affair. These chunky leg noodles are Townsville Ethmostigmus rub ripes. Compared to many of the other rub ripes variants, looking at you, Coranda, and Tiger forms, these Townsville rub ripes are relatively small and really quite docile. So they were a perfect candidate for my first attempt pairing this species. I have paired centipedes before, but only Scolopendra morsitans. These were both hatched in captivity, and I have been raising them for about four years at this point. Centipedes tend to hit sexual maturity well before they reach their maximum size, so it's a near guarantee that these two are ready to breed. While these aren't particularly defensive centipedes, I can't deny that during this pairing attempt the male was being a right pain in the rectum. Centipedes, as I have said many times before, have quite a strong grip, which is awesome when you're watching them wrestle down their prey, but incredibly annoying when you're trying to, like, do anything with them. But eventually, after a lot of struggling and just as much swearing, I managed to get them in the same enclosure. So now it was time to see if the female was ready to see the male as a potential partner, or an especially filling snack. The female, while mostly a laid-back centipede, does have a very strong appetite, so I will admit I was quite nervous here. But once the two centipedes made contact, things were looking pretty promising. Centipedes, thankfully, are none too subtle with their body language. If they're pissed off, you're gonna know it. So the fact that these centipedes were so gentle with one another was an extremely good sign. And generally, if the first impression is good, things aren't going to go sour later down the line. I have heard from other people who have paired Ethmostigma species that they can spend a long time together. It's not like the Huntsman pairing where the courtship was comparatively rushed. So I was definitely in for the long haul here and there's no way that I was going to film all of it. I monitored the centipedes over the course of approximately an hour and throughout that entire time, their interactions remained gentle. So I was confident enough to leave them together overnight, as I did with the Huntsman. I placed the pairing enclosure inside of a larger tub so that if things did go bad, they'd have room to find their own space. By the morning, the two centipedes had separated. Unfortunately, I don't really have any way to tell if they mated. Normally, centipedes will leave behind what's known as a sperm web, which is the structure in which the male deposits its sperm. But in Ethmostigma species, they tend to be very inconspicuous. So really, only time will tell if this pairing was a success.